again. Welcome everybody to the Saturday, August the 5th Power Cube Design Sprint. So we've got a, a working document, a couple of working documents here. Now clearly if you go to my log you're going to access them. And those are, uh, let me actually share my screen. It's the Power Cube Design Sprint 2017. You go to my log to click on that. And let me um, paste that into the chat. Okay, so if you look into the chat, that's the design sprint document there. If you click on that. And let me also share my screen. Okay, so that's the design sprint. Go into go into the edit of that design sprint power cube document. Right below that you see all the placeholders for the CAD, but that's once we get to the CAD. But before that we've got a little bit of conceptual work. But if you click edit on that that Google Doc, please go in there. Uh, cause that's gonna be our working document. I just went in there. I'm seeing one person. So other people please please go in there. I'm also sharing sharing my screen for anyone who's got enough bandwidth there to handle it. Yeah, okay, so I see most people in there. And let's make that make sure that's editable. So the permissions are should be normally when we work, anyone anyone can find and edit. So change I'm changing that to public on the web. Anyone can edit. So you guys now can can edit this document. So so let's let's go right into it. Uh, Design Sprint Power Cube 2017, noon to 4 p.m. So we've got almost four hours to go. So on a power cube um, so we're working on power cube, which of course is going to be the power source for the tractor. It's also the power source for the CB press <clears throat> and everything else. <clears throat> so a very important part. And we're going to CNC cut it now. Um, let's skip to the page number three there, right to number three, just to show what, what's, what's been done already. But the existing power cubes, we've done both structural frames and kind of these uh, angle frames, the structural tubing with the hole so you can attach other stuff. In practice we found that it gets really tight when you start attaching everything to it so we're gonna move away to to just uh, non-structural where you don't attach so many things to it. But the standard design is you got the engine, the pump, the hydraulic reservoir. Uh, fuel tank is actually included in the engines that we're gonna use so that's cool. And um, the in the last version, so the power cube 7 is what you see there you had a little control panel where you had the plug in for forward and return return lines and you had the throttle and, and ignition now in the minimum viable product for now we can uh, e simplify further the, the minimum minimum version is a pull, pull start on that engine so that engine has both electric start and pull start and I'm thinking like just for simplicity's sake at the very very beginning just do the pull start already be quick about it don't even need a battery in that case and uh, I believe the fan will work without the battery as well once you start the engine. I'm pretty sure the fan would work even without a battery because the engine has its own charger of course to charge things. Um, but the last version was a nice compact design. Uh, well, let's, well let's take a look at PowerCube 7 that's before the the tubular structural frames. Nice symmetrical design one hydraulic tank one one fuel tank. Uh, but the disadvantages are that it's kind of tight once you get to the engine, the, the pump, which is on the bottom. It's covered from three sides, so it's kind of hard to access, so it prevents you from being really modular on the pump like we want to do now. And the, the persistent problem has been the mounting of the fan to the cooler. I mean, it's kind of tricky. You have to really understand those connections like a novice. Like I mean, all the... Well, the bottom line is most of the, the connections of the cooling tank came off a lot of our power cubes. It was just a persistent problem. It's for a novice, I think it's it's kind of because we have novices pretty much putting the stuff together during the workshops. So it's a little beyond because you gotta understand too much about the mounting. It's it's just a little tricky. So we want to try to pay attention more to that and simplify it if possible. Um, now also the other issue about the former power cubes, the 27 horsepower engines, like 
the whole batch of engines or just just about all the engines we got had trouble just just trouble starting like pump priming like we always had to had to like somehow there was a even though it looked like it had gas it just wouldn't start so I always would would open it up in the back and pour some gas down down into the carburetor and start it stuff like that it was I don't know what if it's the the engine or the the fuel tank is too low or something or whatever maybe there's but I mean that little bulb had fuel in it and it looked like everything was good but it just wouldn't start anyway so that's that's where we were at that time so uh, now power cube continuing a little bit from the meeting we started on last Tuesday where we talked about the tractor uh, so we're talking about power cube with a gasoline powered engine you can look at the power cube genealogy just to see all the work all the different prototypes that have been done including the micro power cube or power cute as we call it which which you can also make into solar powered and, and that Paracute page on the wiki actually shows a video where we show the little tiny power cube uh, making half inch making holes in half inch metal with the iron worker and driving the the 5,000 pound tractor so it's still very powerful you can see that in the video on that page uh, but this time around we want to CNC cut the frame which we never did before but inspired by the by the D3D 3D printer where the frames are really efficient we want to CNC cut the frame uh, modular hydraulic pump is what Ahmed mentioned as well, and I really agree with that. We should try to make it that it's quick disconnect, like literally you just slip it in and out so you can use it elsewhere. And then hypermodular power cube, separate, separate the cooler, separate the hydraulic reservoir. Uh, so those are the two major hypermodularity features. Um, separate cooler separate I'm gonna make note there separate hydraulic tank two main points because those are very big you know big aspects of the power cube if you separate them you just make it so much more modular in a sense then you can have like a you know like a pig like a piglet with like a pig with 10 piglets sucking on its teats you've got one hydraulic reservoir and you're gonna have 10 power cubes sucking on that hydraulic reservoir and the same for same for the the cooler you can you can uh, design a cooler module where you plug in multiple power cubes if you need cooling because if the power cube is small enough or it's cold outside like you're in the winter you don't even need a cooler so so modularity on that is very useful okay so let's go back and go next page 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 four let's talk about the modules that we have in front of us so what we can do right now is is take a look at uh, in this design sprint in the next three hours, get uh, the diagrams for all those and m maybe possibly finish the CAD for all of them so we can actually assemble the power cube um, later. So frame uh, cut out of one quarter by sheet and the the widths of the corners with like two inch widths. That's that's a good standard. That's a very strong. Um, but we can talk more about that engine uh, so we've got the engine the if you go to the genealogy if you go to power cube 168 uh, you can see the engine like there's a if you click on a genealogy and go to last year's version which is 16.8 which is the power cube with the two engines in it it should have a BOM there there's a file power cube bill of materials if you go to the bill of materials you're gonna see the engine and everything else all the parts that are in this power cube there's the bill of materials so for example for the engine um, so let me just link to the BOM right there on the engine you can pull off the the manufacture the websites the sales websites or whatever of all the parts like the like the engine or the pump so engine mount so the engine has to mount to the frame uh, there's a pump, so once again, see the bill of materials. There's a pump coupler, so we want to do basically you take two, take the engine shaft and take the pump shaft and mount them and, and figure a way to put them together. Just a solid, solid coupler will work if we have some rubber mounts on. Like what we found is uh, we used Lovejoy couplers, solid couplers, all kinds of couplers. Uh, we've stuck with solid couplers and make some flexibility with rubber mounts on the. On a pump, I think the best strategy would be 
get a solid coupler metal to metal one inch engine shaft to the 5 8 inch spline shaft of the hydraulic pump uh, two pieces of metal welded together and then the play comes in when you mount the pump with some rubber mounts like there's a little bit of give so that there's uh, there's a little bit of play for adjustment well we can talk more about that later uh, with the hydraulic reservoir um, integrated hydro hydraulic return so the hydraulic returns what I'd like to see here is have a quick connect filter so that filters and p other power cubes can attach to that so once again the piglet the piglets theory here one one hydraulic reservoir you can have as many return holes with quick couplers just the standard hydraulic quick couplers that are rated for 12 gallons per minute those could do to do quick connects into this piglet into this mother pig so okay cooler independent module with quarter by two frames so yeah let's separate the cooler so it's a it's a module that um, you can put like a big cooler there you can have multiple mounts or multiple small coolers or a larger cooler so you can have multiple power cubes coupling back to it once again hydraulic quick couplers they're self-sealing quick coupling things that you just pull back and connect anything this is this is part of this Lego like modularity thing quick couplers and hydraulic hydraulics allow you to use instead of shafts and and shaft mounting you have flexible hydraulic hoses that are connecting components to one another that's just beautiful okay uh, so let's get right to the overall modularity strategy pa so so let's talk about all the elements we want to have pump should be dismountable as we said so modular I mean modular right modular everything um, pump couples directly to hydraulic tank like instead of having screw in connectors you just do the, all the fittings and make them quick connect adds just a little bit more to the cost but at the at the benefit of modularity it's very much worth it and a coupler pair that's only like you know like twelve dollars for a coupler quick coupler pair uh, whereas the fittings themselves might be like five dollars or something um, so hydraulic tank is frame integrated so so let's look at this this strategy for the hydraulic tank what we could have is one power cube that has a tank built into it I mean we can also mount the tank as a separate unit but it would be very convenient if you're using one power cube to have a power cube frame with a, with a hydraulic tank mounted right in that frame so that the other p power cubes can be tankless because as I said in the last last time the tank is one of the most difficult things to manufacture because we're building them we're not using off-the-shelf tanks because typically they don't have the right geometry we're trying to be very um, very custom so that we we get the power cube to the right form that we make that we need just like for example in the last version because the power cube the the tank hydraulic tank was off the shelf it's just all awkward and and just doesn't fit right it takes too much space so we make our own tanks but you can save on making multiple tanks just make one and then connect multiple power cubes to it that's a good strategy so you can have one master power cube other power cubes tankless now the engine itself already has a like a two gallon fuel tank in it something like that so uh, we don't need a fuel tank that's a way way simplification over last time so we're talking right now of power cubes that are super super modular okay so as, as I said cooler module is separate gas tanks are built into engine minimum viable product doesn't even have a battery I, I'm not gonna need a battery the, the pull start is good I read some reviews on Amazon they say that the engine just starts every single time and it's easy to start so the engine seems to be pretty robust and it's cheap as anything two hundred thirty dollars uh, for the 16 horsepower engine okay so now let's go to the I mean so we can actually start breaking up the tasks uh, basically there's the engine CAD so so it boils down to let's get all this into FreeCAD so we had some some stuff in in uh, what you might call it in SketchUp uh, but we got to redraw everything in FreeCAD, so it's just making a, once again a simple, simple files. Start with the simple placeholder files for all the parts. So uh, slide six is engine CAD. So that means start with just into these documents. However, we divide this up here, which we will explicitly soon. 
we're gonna put names to this um, take the go to the bill of materials well let me let me paste in the bill of materials again so the bill of materials which is on uh, slide four that link there uh, if you take that bill of materials that's where you look for what this engine looks like it's in a BOM so look at the BOM and copy and paste the the engine into this working document so we have everything in one place uh, try to pick out some some dimension drawings from various places I haven't looked into that what all is available but we basically gotta go on the internet and for each of these parts click on them and see if they have drawings if they do just paste them into this document so we have something good to work with or just put a link to it those specific uh, diagrams the dimensioned fabrication drawings or technical drawings and then we go to 3d we reverse engineer that and then go into to engine CAD and FreeCAD so for everything we generate FreeCAD so slide 7 is pump we do everything for the pump slide 8 is the oil filter slide 9 is the coupler which we have to draw because they're not gonna have um, you know we gotta draw this up cooler plus fan those are off-the-shelf parts so first diagram and then reverse engineer it into FreeCAD and then lastly let's look let's talk about the frame design and the hydraulic reservoir design so maybe we could do, uh, those are two things that are major uh, design points right now so as far as the frame we've done the essentially it's six times it's essentially the theory of the D3D which is six times a flat sheet a flat side right and you put six of those together and you weld them and that's the most minimum power uh, uh, power cube or, or 3d printer frame or any frame uh, using here in this case we're gonna we want to use a quarter inch steel as opposed to eighth inch because quarter inch is gonna be stronger for for a power cube which is gonna end up weighing a few hundred pounds 100 200 kilos maybe 100 for the light one if you if it's a si single one with the master one's probably going to be like 150 pounds, 200 pounds, 250 pounds. Maybe the slave power cubes might be like 200 pounds or something. So, so quite human handleable. Um, you know, tra the engine itself is about 100 pounds. So everything else around it is going to add probably another 100. Okay, but okay. So let's talk about. We talked about the master power cube, which has a built-in reservoir. So basically, you've got the frame proper. And then on the side of it, literally, you have a, a tank that's mounted to it. But how do you do it? You can design that, and this is where we have to... Um, well, maybe that's a good task for Ahmed. Uh, but basically, if you do uh, the flat CNC cutout, and I would not do any, any bends here, because bends end up taking time. It's doable, but I mean, it from my experience the bends always I mean it's it's probably easier to weld it than bend it because then after you bend it you gotta get it at a pretty exact angle to make it fit right and that takes time I mean if you want to do a crap job yeah you can do it quick but if you really want to do it fast uh, it's actually quicker to weld it than to bend it and the other thing being if you're bending you need a metal brake otherwise it's it's a pretty tough job so we're saying okay no metal break no metal press we're just gonna say we have a welder and a CNC torch table and that's how we do the frame so so what do you do so if you if you're gonna do a frame integrated uh, tank that's how the pieces would look this piece here one of these frame pieces would look look like instead of being the standard cutout it has a longer side for the reservoir okay so it look like this right so uh, let me do the white so that would be the cutout for one of the, the two sides and then the top side would be similar to this and the bottom side would be similar and the other side would be just a whole sheet you see what I'm saying so basically, and then you, you're going to need a plate to cover this one side. But essentially, you're going to have this, this kind of piece times 
four. And that's it. And then you get this one piece here and the one regular piece on the... So a frame has six sides. This will be times four. Then there's the right side and the left side. The left side is a is a filled piece, just like... Uh, let me start a new page. Um, so it's going to happen... So this is going to be one of these. One of This is the tank side tank side which is just a flat sheet of metal whatever the and the frame should be probably 24 inches so two foot let's see if we can make it fit but everything here like the size and everything else we have to determine that we're, we're doing the proper design right now as we speak uh, in CAD so it's easy so start with 24 and then if if it's too small for the engine I think 24 should fit but it's gonna look like this uh, this piece times four one tank side piece and then there's gonna be one regular piece which is just so that's just times one but it's gonna be just one of these right so you got six frame pieces like that and that's your frame with a built-in reservoir now you're gonna to have to put a the close the side on this uh, there's gonna be a closure on this side so it's essentially gonna be a piece like this actually so we're gonna have tank side that's times two because you need uh, this if this is gonna be the reservoir you need the front and back, like six sides to it. So that's going to be, this is going to be the cover. Does that make sense? Does anyone have questions on the frame? Uh, but I try to explain that. And we can make this like here, like you can make this as big a tank as you want. You can make like a smaller tank. If we keep it to a cube, then these pieces are identical. If we don't keep it to a cube, then we would have to modify, have more unique parts. But this allows us to say a two by two, you know, say say two feet by two feet, um, using just three unique part count for the entire frame, including the hydraulic reservoir. Now, how simple is that? That is as simple as it gets. Uh, before we were doing the tank out of six by twelve tubing, which we first cut on a bandsaw. And welded the ends put in all the fittings so now this doesn't include the fittings yet so let's move on to what the fittings would look like so so this tank is going to be feeding pumps and having returns okay so let's look at the reservoir design say this is the front pane of it uh, the front side like the wide side because the the reservoir is going to be a pancake essentially it's pancake shaped it's flat shaped it's on one one end of the power cube itself okay so what do you need here you need source lines and return lines continuity of fluid okay so in and out otherwise you've got infinite energy okay so let's let's say the sources are here so these would be like one inch pipes fittings you can put as many as you like that's what I said you can do one uh, minimum is one for one power cube but let's say we do Let's do, I mean, four. Uh, actually, yeah, for the practical thing is, let's try to go for four, maybe. Um, and then four returns. Now, the returns can be half inch, uh, so smaller. But let's, let's try four returns, like on a... So the suction would be on the bottom side, and then the return would be on the, on the top side. So you got suction here. Suction side. and then a return here. So these are just holes that are going to be torched, right, with the CNC. So this is all automatically placed in, and then we weld fittings into that. So that's suction, and this is return. What happens at the return? So the return is going to have with quick, quick coupler. So even if you make these, you can quick couple as many power cubes, second, like, slave power cubes as, as you want to this, including the first master power cube. So at minimum, you're using one of these in operation. And a suction would just have a valve. What, so, okay, so here's one of these deals. I have not yet found a metal high-flow coupler that allows suction. So what we um, do is use valves. And Ahmed's going to pipe in because... Man, he just knows too much. Ahmed, you gonna pipe in there? 
Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, say it again. Why I have mineral in the cubic? It's just one and all connected to just one piece. Yeah. Just a point where I have to open all this stuff. Oh, why do you want multiple holes? In the return. Well, because assuming you're doing in the return. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can have one, but somehow if you have multiple ones, there's going to be a connection that you have to do elsewhere. So you can do the connection, the multiples here, or you'd have to do multiples elsewhere, right? I mean, you can have one, but I was thinking that, I mean, conceptually, the simplest design is that, say you want to put another power cube onto your tractor. All you need is the slave power cube, no hydraulic reservoir, and just two hoses with a quick connector and that's it no other fittings at all so this okay so before this quick coupler what i would do here is i would do separate filters because the nice small filters there i mean you can get i mean you can make a big filter but once again if you have a filter hanging onto it onto this it's like a break point. You want to keep this close. You can have a big filter and with multiple fittings to it, but it would not work well in terms of like it would break off easily. So it's very easy to put in a separate filter and separate return. It's redundant, very redundant on the filters. But what if you have? Um, but the idea uh, here is let's go to the next slide because it's actually pretty important and we've never done this. And that is a modular filter. Okay, so let's talk about a modular filter. Uh, Ahmed, does that answer the question or no? So I'm going to the... Yes, I, yes, yeah? I see your point. Okay. So I'm going to the modular filter page. So think about this. What if the filter was just a filter with two quick connectors? So you have, you know, you have a bunch of spare filters, which is great for, once again, like say your filter fails or you get a plugged up filter. Um... You just take one off the shelf and you plug it in. So all it is, is uh, you're going to have a filter. Uh, so that will be your fil oil filter. Uh, because in the explanation for an oil filter is you, you can't have dirty fluid. So you pump the fluid and you, you have a filter so that if there's any dirt, if you're doing quick connects and you get any dirt into the quick connects, you you'd wear out the pump. So you use the filter. So... Um, so that filter is going to have a quick coupler on each side, male and female, and then that's it. And then, uh, of course, the fittings that go into the filter itself. So whatever NPT or whatever fitting you've got in there, you've got that. So that's kind of how a filter looks. you got the oil filter. Oil goes in one side and comes out the other after being filtered. Um... So that's just a simple diagram of what a filter looks like. And it's got this top here that the bottom canister screws into. It's kind of what a filter looks like. And the quick connects on each side. One is male. Uh, one is male. Male QC. Quick connect. And then another one is a female quick connect. And they're directional, so they only flow like one way. So you got to pay attention to which is male and female. But the, the standard convention is that uh, the forward lines are all male, the return lines are all female. Uh, so that would be, say, a female. So basically you got these very simple standalone filters that you plug. So you plug that filter into the quick connect coupler on a hydraulic reservoir. And then you pu plug in your return line from whatever power cube or whatever device you have into the filter. So that's a way that you can have this this super simple thing here happening, one reservoir doing all of that, and that's where that's what we would like to do. Like uh, I'd like to see for this time around definitely like four outlets just to really test out the modularity aspects of this kind of design. Does that make sense? Any questions? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Back to kind of what Akma was saying, I was just thinking 
the modularity aspects, and I'm not that familiar with the hydraulic system, usually the design of the cube and all that, but I was trying to think of a way, if it made sense to make almost like a, a other module that you could connect to add more uh, couplers, you know, like uh -huh. have fewer to start with, and then like a, an adapter that you could yeah. add to add multiple modules. I don't know how reasonable yeah. that would be, because yeah. you want it to be like a hard line that you bolt it on that would connect to uh, one or interconnect and then add multiples, which... I mean, I guess you could you can use steel pipe to do that hydraulic stuff, but it might be kind of difficult on those power cubes, yeah. depending on how you have to mount it. Yeah. So look at page number number thirteen. So I drew up an example of what you what you just said, and we've done that actually on the the tracked tractor where we had the multiple power cubes on it. We actually had allowance for four because we were going to put four power cubes on it. We only put two. We got only to two. But if you do that, yeah, you can have one of these exits with... So let's let's actually start a separate slide, slide, duplicate slide. So let's let's take a look at that, because there's a very practical point about it that we've learned. So, uh, like, regarding separate versus, versus combined uh, quick connects. So here's an example of a combined one. So so we can get rid of these holes. We can put like a long one here. You know, this one has three. Well, it should have four, but let's say we got a th triple, triple one. Well, that thing, I can just tell you right now, if that's a quick connect, so it would either like, if that's a quick connect, it would say dangle whichever way, but it gets so long that if you're going to make the... See, so the so say you plugged it in right there, and you've got quick connects on these three or four. Oh yeah, so that's actually got four because it's got. It's actually four because it's got this one on the end. So it's got four quick connects on it. Well, the practice is just really awkward. We've done it, and it's easy to break these off and and stuff like that, and uh, not as clean. It's yeah. I would prefer to do the separate ones. It's doable, and you can do it. Like in fact, if you wanna, you know, say you took took up. You say you wanted to do five power cubes and you already took up all four. Yeah, then you can connect like a multiplier. But it's just, I think, cleaner. Like conceptually, both conceptually and practically, it's cleaner from our experience to do the separate ones. And the point is that it doesn't cost you much more to do the... In fact, it's less. The part count is less. Because if you count the parts here, you've got... There's a T here, a cup, a cup, little connector piece between each T... They don't make like these multiple couplers. You just have T's and you've got connectors. So here, the part count could be actually very significant. Typically, oh yeah, so let me tell you the, yeah, there's a real disadvantage for parts count. So let me explain that. So look at the part count here for this system, for part count for return. Let's just count it right here because that's an important point um, for the return. So in this one, um, Every quick connect has a coupler into the, the T because the quick couplers are all females. And they don't make male T's. All the T's are typically female unless you go custom and it's more expensive and it's very rare. All the T's for hydraulics typically come as females unless you go to very expensive T's. So what happens here is you've got the coupler you got the four couplers. Each one of them has a fitting that goes into the T. So let's let's do that very explicitly here. So it's um, because you'll see, you'll see that in practice, it's it's actually so much simpler to do what I'm proposing here. So let's do the count to convince you. Um, so four, you've got five quick couplers. Well, let's just take a look at everything here so the number of quick couplers altogether um, without plugging anything into this so here you've got four on the going out and then there's two here because there's a male and female connecting there so there's six total of six quick coupler pieces and if it's uh, which is five female because they return uh, one male 
which would be the one right there's gonna be two right there there's gonna be one male and one female there because they're plugging into each other assuming this is a quick connect device here which we want because we like quick connect so six quick couplers for every quick coupler you've got a coupling just a male male coupling so there's six couplings uh, what do you call those six they're, they're called nips six nips um, you've got three T's and then two nips between the T's so six nips two couplers okay so what's the total what's the number Uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 parts. Okay, well, let's do the count for here. Uh, get rid of that. So go, go back to page... Go back to page 13. In the separate one. So part count. Four quick couplers. Um, four nips, and then you've got the bungs in the, I mean, you can actually, you can actually weld a male nip, act, you know, the simplest way you can, you can do this, you can do uh, four nips that are welded right into the tank. It's not typically done, but you can do that, that's well acceptable. Uh, four quick couplers and full four nips for a total of eight parts. So you got less than half the part count of this. And actually in this one, I forgot that, well, let's see, there's a nip. No, I think I got everything. Two, four, six. Yeah. So it's it's half the part count. And, and because hydraulics, it's all about the fittings and they take time. I mean, man, this is twice as simple, twice as fast to build for that part. It matters so that's why I would prefer the, the this thing so does that does that is that a compelling argument or does that make no sense um, it's okay really it's okay yeah okay um, yeah I mean it's just uh, you know we've done all of this we've done all the multiple ones and it's it's just like when you get to doing it, it it's you know you think it's all nice and neat and all that but it just ends up taking so much time it's not fun whereas here now I'm thinking about it based on the experience from before and it's like wow okay this could now take it to the next level I mean those kinds of uh, time factors do matter when it comes to the practicality of the thing that you're building so let's assume we do that let's let's shoot for a four four hole thing where you can attach four filters and they're just separate quick connect filters as we mentioned here modular filter modular quick connect filter and that's it so let's divvy up who wants to do what so what we got to do is draw up these parts and then once we got all of them we put them assemble them together into a nice power cube and um, the concept is there and then once we have all the all the all the parts the cool thing is we can go nuts on modifications different sizes different configurations different reservoir sizes and so forth but I mean you just cannot beat this integrated frame here on page 12 that's got three unique parts and then and includes the the hydraulic reservoir now let's let's talk one more thing about the hydraulic reservoir our hydraulic reservoir also has a have a breather and a filler so you need two more holes in it so you got a little breather so air gets in and out because if you don't have air inlet then you'd get air locks because uh, the, the volume of hydraulic fluid changes, you're going to get either vacuum or pressure. So you need a breather, um, which can be on, I don't know, breather could be wherever. But if it's on top, then it's a breakage point, like if you, you can't put anything on top. So maybe it's a good idea to put the breather off from the side and bend it up. Uh, so let's go to... Well, wrong page. Let me go to the other page. 
Uh, let's go to this re this reservoir design here on page 13. So breather, but maybe make the breather happen like off the side so you so you can't break it off the top and a filler. So you need a breather and a filler. Uh, so a breather cap and that's in the overall bill of materials. So let's let's label that as breather and filler. So call that the filler. I mean, they could be anywhere, but we gotta just put in a place that makes sense. On top somewhere. You don't want the filler to be on the bottom because <laughs> you can't fill it. You want it to be on the top so you you don't spill. And the breather has to be above the the fluid level, so it really needs to be like as high as possible. It might just have to go on the top. Uh, I mean, top is the obvious place to put it. But the only disadvantage of being on the top is if, you know, you can't stack something else on top of this power cube now. Uh, which we, I don't know, I, I think it's, I think on top might be good. Uh, it's just one of those things, if something falls on it, you can easily break it off. So you might have, you know, if it's on the top, you want a protector around it. If it's on the side, it's pretty much protected, maybe. So we can think about where to put it. But the breather has to be above the water line, the, the oil line. Now, what about the visor for seeing the level of the fluid? Well, you know, you can put a visor, like one of those visors that they have on like a fluid level gauge, which is just a glass uh, plastic window. Um, that's one way to do it. Or you can, you can do like, you can have a dipstick. So the filler could just have a dipstick. Um, I mean, I, I don't necessarily want to, I mean, the, Definitely the side gauge is convenient, but a dipstick is fine. So you could have a dipstick there. So you don't need to put in another hole on the, inside the tank, which is, I mean, if you put, if you mount the, the visor window, that's actually two more holes. It's actually one hole on the top, one hole on the bottom. Um, I don't know. You can also break that, like if you, it's a break point too. It's so so. I mean, it's fine to go with a breather with uh, with a dipstick to measure the get the level of the fluid. It's all right. If you want to go more fancy, that's we can do it. But this is enough. Um. So, breather with dipstick, and you know immediately when, like, say your your power cube doesn't have hydraulic fluid, which you can't run hydraulic pumps without hydraulic fluid. If you do that, the pump will just burn out. So, but you know, like, as soon as you try to move the tractor or whatever, and it does, and it starts to jerk or not move uh, smoothly, that means you got low fluid level, and you tr stop the tractor immediately. At that point. So there's a feedback unless you, if it's unattended, then you can burn out. A pump if you don't have the if you're not paying attention to your fluid level but that can happen whether you do or do not have the side gauge you always have to make sure you check that and if you don't see any leaks you know that the hydraulic fluid is going to be relatively constant in the tank unless you have some spill or you're constantly connecting and disconnecting things in which case you have a little drip of hydraulic fluid every time you connect and disconnect unless you use leak proof couplers um, yeah, but but the couplers are self-sealing. There's just a little dribble, like whenever you break the seal, uh, it's a spring-loaded ball valve that makes that seal. But there's just a little drop that is lost every time you you do that, which is also the case for biohydraulic fluid, which is canola oil with additives, which we get we'll get to as soon as we get our tractor to grow some canola here, right? So so right now we're at the stage of perfecting our machine so that we can really go crazy on good regenerative uh, land development. All right. Um, so who wants to take which part? I pretty much discussed the main design theory here. Um, so who do we got? So in this work, this working uh, session, let's just take, take a part each and just do it. We got uh, three hours. So uh, Ahmed, you want to take the frame?
Who wants to do the frame? Uh, okay, in FreeCAD I can do it, okay. Okay. Well, so, so um, yeah, yeah, just start doing it. Two foot wide, so two foot cube. And then we fit it all together. And make sure you leave your sketches under, save, you know, as soon as you've got any document, just save it. And then um, make sure you have the sketches in the initial document. So we have to modify the power cube frame. Of course, we can go back to the sketch and modify it. Okay. Who, who wants to drop the engine? Engine, anybody? I can give it a go. Well, uh, that's in the bill of materials. Uh, well, it's in the working document. It's the engine is definitely in the bill of materials. So you've got the sourcing for that engine. Yep. Uh, is that Joseph? Yeah. Okay. Oh wow. So. Oh, I see. Oh, there's a whole bunch more people here. I didn't see it. There's, there's a scrolling bar for every all the participants. I only thought I saw four, but there's a whole bunch of us. Joseph, why don't you do that if you want to do that? So basically, uh, start with a diagram of all the dimensions and uh, and get on it. Okay, so I'm going to so I'm going to allocate these fine fine names. So engine CAD. We've got Joseph. Yeah. I post a link. I don't know maybe who does the engine can see that. Joseph. It's a, it's a similar engine. Where's your where's your link? There's on page six. Oh no, on the ZT on the text. Oh okay. Yeah, pump it into the document uh so we have a direct link on page six. Okay, so we got Joseph there. Um so for the frame, we said we got Ahmed. And guys, you know what's happening with the Saudi Arabian event? The hot, the hot deal there is, just got a call from Ahab yesterday, and he says he wants to do 300 printer builds, uh, two days, two days, two days. What do you think of that? I'm for it. So... Th we're going to build 300 printers in th in six days in three different cities and he wanted to do that part of the thing was for women traveling uh, since they always need an accom accompaniment in saudi arabia it's easier if you bring the event to different cities so it's a little easier for the male female ratio co common to the to the event but that's that's the update um okay Pump CAD. Who wants to take on a pump? Speak up, somebody. I can do that. Okay, Abe. Yeah. All right. Uh, oil filter. That's a, that's a simple one. So oil filter with fittings and quick couplers. Who wants to do oil filter? Yeah, I can do that. Israel. <laughs> yep. All right. On where to get the links to get the source material from. Say it again. Could you recap on the link where we yeah. can get the, the right. from? Yeah, so 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 there's a BOM link and I'm gonna just paste this right into every single one, but I'm pasting that into every one of those. The BOM is uh, linked on page page four, but I'm also linking it to all these ones. So you have it right there. Okay, coupler. Now coupler uh, this is kind of like maybe, I don't know, who is that? Uh, Emmanuel territory? What? Sorry. 
You want to do the coupler? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, coupler, I mean, coupler is even easier, but maybe you want to do the engine mount. That's harder. We'll give you the hard one. Okay. Engine mount means you take, I mean, the coupler is you have to look at the shafts. Now, for the engine mount, you have to look at the bolt mounting pattern of that engine and draw up a, a plate that will attach to the frame somehow. So think about the frame. There's the frame. Uh, so that requires a little thinking. That's what I'm saying. It's a little harder. Whereas the coupler, it's straightforward because you got, that's like no mysteries. So okay, let me do the straightforward one then. Uh, okay. Uh, I have to know the, um, the mounting of the, of the motor. Yeah, so you look at the motor CAD of uh, the motor. You got to look at, we need to, the first thing. So here's the process. So Joseph got the engine cap. The first thing on each page is you see each page has dimension diagram for reverse engineering. As soon as you find one, paste it into this document. So we know that you found one and you're actually working on it. So right now, Joseph with the engine, I do not see a, a diagram pasted into the document or a link to it so that you can pull off that bolt pattern off that dimension diagram. Does that make sense, Emmanuel? Yeah, but how, where can we find the dimension for the engine? Uh, so you look at the, what the engine is, so you look at whoever's selling the engine, and typically whoever's selling it, they will have diagrams. And if they don't, look up oh. another. Look uh, up. I can do something else. I have this engine uh, here. Oh, if you do, then just measure it. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the proof thing, but you should also, I mean, just Google it online to see if it, if it sh well, Joseph's going to do it. Joseph, paste that, that CAD uh, tech drawings. As soon as you find them, so everybody paste. Hang on a second, Marchin. What yeah. um, the uh, in the bill of materials, it's the uh, the engine is in there is the eighteen horsepower with the electric start. But you said yeah. you're going to the sixteen horsepower. Yeah, what? yeah. Right. They're so actually what? externally they're identical, and for the one without without the engine start, the engine start bolts on to the engine, so. Uh, underneath that is the recoil start version. So it's the same. So I can just take Dr all the drawings from that. Uh, yeah. There are maps or yeah. whatever. It yeah, that's correct. Yeah. And this is just going to be a place. The the CAD design for the engine is just a place uh, holder, right? Just to show how things are assembled and whatnot. Yeah, it's a placeholder that shows that when you put the engine in, is that engine going to fit in the frame? That's the kind of stuff you got to figure out. Is the is there space for the within the frame? Can you mount the pump on it? How does it fit? What's what's the geometry end up looking like? That's that's the critical point. In other words, you try to get the dimensions as close to the original one so that to the real one, meaning that when you do the CAD, it's actually telling you the, the complete story as opposed to you, you do that in CAD and you find out, oops, in reality, you cannot build it because it's a little different. So that's where you want to take a look at the uh, dimension drawings online and draw, draw that up as closely as possible. Or possibly Google up in like GrabCAD, that's a 3D CAD repository, uh, things like that. Okay, so we're missing engine, so engine mounting, I believe we don't have a placeholder for that. So slide, duplicate slide, engine mount to frame. So how much of this is a uh, redesign and how much reference material is there for, uh, I guess, looking at the overall design? If people are repositioning things on the tank, uh, might be useful to look at some older stuffs so you get an overall picture of where things can be put and where they shouldn't be put. Like you mentioned stuff getting broken off, but then there's yeah. also access concerns i mean i guess right. when it's assembled you can move it around later but yeah yeah i mean the only things we know is that there's a frame 
there's a hydraulic reservoir and then you've got um, we're not worrying about the the cooler because it's a separate module so you don't have that and you don't have the battery so essentially if you can put the engine in with the pump on it then that's the sufficiency basically what you do is once we get the CAD we put it all together into the one document and see okay does it fit but we do know the only things we know is that the fittings on the reservoir are at the bottom and at the top that's all we know there's gonna be a bunch of filters at the top and a bunch of suction lines at the bottom so that determines where the pump will be because the pump lot the line to the pump goes to that uh, but yeah the, the point is once we generate all the parts we can assemble them in any way we want uh, and that's the part that it will be obvious it's like okay I've got these filters the engine doesn't fit oh, okay I got to move the engine over or turn it 90 degrees or move it up you know things like that that's what's gonna happen and it's not gonna be too complicated once you have the parts you can manipulate them very easily within FreeCAD so that's the idea um, next cooler plus fan um, cooler plus fan frame so frame is uh, yeah Ahmed there Yeah, as far as the, if we have enough people, we can actually, yeah, the one reservoir plate, all the action on the reservoir will happen pretty much on the one side. Uh, all the holes, four holes at the top, four holes at the bottom, and then the fifth one at the top, sixth one at the top. Um, yeah, I, I think that's okay. Let's let's see what else we got. Cooler plus fan. Um, well, cooler and fan are separate things, and we can put them together after that. So I think um, those are big enough in themselves that we should split them. So let's split the cooler and fan and give that to two people. So yeah, actually, I cannot do anything until the other guys have. Uh, dude, uh, Google, dude, five minutes, Google, a, a, go to a, a seller of that. They should have cat drawings. Or, the bolt pattern should be every. Just Google that damn thing, man. That's going to be all over the internet. <laughs> you don't need to wait. Just Google it. All you really need is the bolt pattern, and from there you can design a mount. Uh, if you look at the picture of that engine, you see how it's oriented and so forth. You, you'll see how to how to mount it. Oh, you need just bulk. Uh... Okay, are we clear on what uh, what the what the task there is? So, so the engine itself is the engine. You don't need to do anything on that. You just need a plate or some kind of a mounting structure that will connect to a two by two foot frame. So it'll most likely be perhaps. A plate. Where's where's the mounting base? Is it on the bottom or on the side? It's on the bottom, right? It sits on some flat surface, right? Do you know? It should be on flat. Yeah. Okay, bottom. flat on the bottom, right? So you got a plate. That means you need to mount that plate um, within the frame somehow. So probably do like vertical connectors, and that plate mounts on each side, right? So that's what you need to do. But you need the bolt pattern for that plate. And once you have the bolt pattern, like if you need to move that engine around, which we will, I mean, we're going to need to optimize that. You can move the bolt pattern around to fit that wherever the engine needs to go. Does that make sense? Yeah, and then, then 
so this will be attached on the frame, not uh, welded. It will be bolted. No, you don't want to weld it. You want to. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you um, what you probably want to do is a, a weld vertical bars to the frame. That's probably you want to weld because, you know, and, but then maybe attach the, since we're going to need to adjust that height. I don't know, maybe the vertical bars have holes in them so you can attach it at different heights. Um, or just once we finish, figure it out, the plate itself should definitely be removable. Because um, if, I'm look, if I'm looking at this right, the bolt pattern is a square. So yeah. you could... could we put it in slots and slide yeah. it around back and forth or something like something, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's the idea. Just, uh, um, yeah, slots are a good idea because it gives you adjustment. And then how? And then wherever we attach it to the frame, also you should leave some little bit of attachment because it's always hard to get it exactly in the right place. So linear holes are good. Um, Let's see. So we got uh, the point of this whole exercise is that we're design we're breaking the thing down. There's no dependence in one part on the other. We'll we'll work out the interfaces later. Right now we just need the parts, the general uh, general idea of the parts in their CAD. Okay. So uh, fan and cooler. Okay. Who wants to take the fan and cooler? So we've got who else is left? We've got Alejandro. We got. Roberto, maybe you guys, fan and cooler, that's all we got, Roberto and Alejandro, let's get you the fan and cooler, is that okay? It's okay to me. Okay. Um, so maybe, Yeah, whichever one we do. So do maybe Roberto do the cooler. And then once we have the cooler, we can do the cooler module, which would have either one of the coolers or multiple ones of them. Like maybe, you know, one cube could have like four of those coolers or whatever, like a little a complete cooler module. We'll think about that later, but for now, we know that we need one, one cooler, so we can multiply it later. Okay, fan. Alejandro, can you do that? Yeah, I can, but uh, I need uh, any reference. I don't know what is exactly the task that... Right, so the references, uh, the bill of materials, do you see the, the fan and the bill of materials? So I put a link there, so when, so if you click on the yeah. bill of materials, there's a fan in there, let's see, where is that? Okay, so there's the cooler, there's that, okay, it's... Uh, Amazon it says Amazon.com. Okay, so you gotta let's let's get an explicit link to that. I'm searching it on Amazon. There's no li direct link in the in the spreadsheet. Okay, well there it is. So yeah, that's what it is. Um, yeah, that looks good to me. Okay, if you see that, I just put in a link in the spreadsheet for the fan. Do you see it? Yeah. Okay. So something that approximates that, just a rough, rough drawing of that. It's a 12-inch size thing. Yep. And as you see the mounting things on it, like what's important as for the fan is that you get the location of the those four mount points because that's the critical dimension. 
one it's 12 inches diameter but two it's got those four mount points um, and that's you see those connecting pieces that's the part that's kind of crazy that keeps coming off in our things on our power cubes so we're gonna make sure that I mean those because those connectors are actually plastic some of them actually just broke off when we used them um, and stuff like that so Okay, we're good here. We need to redraw this part. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we don't have any CAD for that outside of the SketchUp, so and the SketchUp we can't use, so. Yeah, I mean, just make it. I mean, simple. Don't worry about the detail. Just worry about um, just representing dimension. The, the dimension of the uh, uh, the, the, the radio, the radios. Yeah, yeah. So that that we need to find somewhere. So we need to search for that. So let's let's see. Yeah, I what mean the form, radius is what twelve. What format can I use? What format? What do you mean by that? So we need the bolt pattern and then length with height. So, I mean, let's see how much we get in for, for information like that. Um, what we could do is just search it, like search for radio cooling fan and then just diagrams. So, so, so do, do a search. And then just 
view images. There's probably a diagram might pop up. No, no diagrams. I mean, if there's a product manual somewhere, we need a man manual. Do you need only the space, yeah? Yeah, you just need the space, pretty much. Um, space up for the holes and just the length with height, really. Okay, okay. Yeah, and somewhere is, let's see, let's see if we can find a product manual anywhere that typically has fan assembly PDF. On one picture and one dimension, one dimension and can do a, a good, good reference. Yeah, yeah, you can. I mean that bolt pattern. I mean it's generally desirable. You can. What we will do is mount it on this metal grate, which has many holes in it. So the it's not critical. That, that dimension is actually not critical. Just the length with height is the main thing. And a placeholder, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna keep looking, but I can't find um, any diagrams or manuals for this mm. engine. Um, I found a couple of different sites that list the total external dimensions, just length width height. They're not all in agreement, but mm -hmm. that'd be easy to to ballpark within like half an inch. Yeah. Um, yeah, do that. So start by drawing a cube of those dimensions and then wear, you know, wear it away, make it put a shaft on it, stuff like that like that. Do you have um have you ever used SketchUp? Cuz you can what okay, what's possible is you can go into Let's see, there's Google Warehouse. You can open up our last CAD file, but the thing is, huh, let's see. Because Tom already did a rough diagram of it under PowerCube 16.8. And let's see if, um, let's see if we can just view, export that as a mesh format, and then we can reverse engineer it in FreeCAD. Let's see. Um, is this a, a SketchUp model? There is. There's a SketchUp model that's on the 16. There's a link in a genealogy to the. Wait, where is and that? Is it the that you need? That we need? Yeah. The the fan and engine is in there. The pump is in there. But I mean, we still have to draw it up because it's going to be in mesh format so you can't export let's see where's that file for it files bom pdf working document wiring diagram i don't see the file there what's going on here let's see um That file's not on the PowerCube 16.8 page. Let's see if I can find it on my log somewhere. Um, I uh, I was looking at a model in 3D warehouse yeah. by Tom. Yeah, yeah. That's what that you was need. in the 15.8 version. 15.8. That would have the different 
That's different though. We were doing different engines then. Let's see. Oh. Oh, there it is. Uh, oh, here. Let me put the link in there. This is uh, 16.09. Is. Oh, that's not. That's the BOM. And that's the SketchUp. Okay, I put in a SketchUp link on page six in the working document. No kidding, there's a version 16.8 and 16.9 of the Power Cube. I forgot we did. Wait. No? What? There's two pages on the wiki that have the same thing. I, we gotta clean it up here. No. One is called 1609 and 69, and one is 168. So we gotta combine those two. No, that's the same thing. That wasn't two different Power Cubes. Same thing. Yeah, so there's a link to the warehouse. And for download, it allows you to do Colada. What you got to do is download the Colada file. And that's a mesh format. I think we can open that with FreeCAD. Wait, am I misunderstanding something? That that version uh, 1609 has a twin engine configuration, which looks totally different. Yeah, it's got two of the same engine. But is that that the, that's the same as the Duramax? I mean, it's yeah. two of the Duramax. Yeah, it's supposed to be a representation of it. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, I just thought they looked. Uh, so I thought it was something different. Yeah, the thing in the in the SketchUp shows the engine with that big pump mount and and pump. So you don't need that. That's the mounting, the coupler and mounting part. Um, you just need the engine up to the shaft.
was the uh, what did you say about the colada file versus the um, uh, this? You can download the colada file. That's that's what I want instead of the SketchUp like 2017 model or whatever. Well, yeah, because you want to import it into into FreeCAD, and it can't import SketchUp. You can only import Colada, which is an open okay. format. Yeah. Whoa, there's even a Duramax engine specs with line drawings file, but that's... Tom doesn't have a link to that. We tried. That was a PDF. Wait, what about... On the wiki, maybe there's a... That's already on the wiki. So it's sixteen point eight.
Okay, those... The links in the chat. Okay, they should be going in our design document. Like the mounting. That's that's a so that's what we need. Pump it into the into the working document. The one images dot channel advisor dot com.
Anyone have any questions? Now with the six inch and the twenty four inch and twenty four inch is for the dimension of the the tank side, which is inside the cube, right? Sorry, go ahead. Uh, you write six inch multiplied by twenty four multiplied by twenty four inch. Right. This is the the tank uh, volume. Yeah. Uh, inside the cubic. Right. Okay. But what about the cubic itself? Yeah. Two by two feet. Okay. This is total uh, outside. Yeah. And the and the thickness is point uh, two five inch. Point two five. Thickness. Point two five quarter inch. And the down, uh, the bottom level is flat without holes. And the what? It's just a sheet. Yeah. The bottom, it's just a sheet. Well, bottom, bottom flat. would be, um, oh, yeah, yeah, wait. Um, four, five, six, seven. The bottom would be like this, right? Like this. Yeah, the bottom sh no. doesn't need a, no, it, it should be just, um, uh, oh. Like two of these, then, right? Okay, Chalas. Wait, okay. so we have eight pieces? That's one too much. What are we. Oh, yeah, so this this one's times three. Right? It'd have to be four, actually. Um, front. One, two, three, four. Oh yeah, four, four, four. The bo so that's bottom. Okay, yeah, that's four, yeah, and this is four. one. Two on one side, and the other uh, bottom and uh, yeah, and uh, up. Okay, two looks like that. Mhm. Mm uh, Martin, this um, this yeah. Colada file I'm opening is still loading in FreeCAD. It's listing like. 1200 meshes in the file yeah that's what i'm saying it's like useless but can you open it it's been opening for like 20 minutes yeah that's that's the problem that's why uh, that's that's the issue so maybe um <laughs> forget it <laughs> i don't know um same thing you know, same. it's still scrolling down the, the number's still growing i think it might be at oh like maybe 1500 Okay, well, maybe it may, see if it opens up. It might take just forever, but that's what you get. That's the mesh files are not friendly to FreeCAD. Yeah, it's pretty much effectively locked me out of my computer. Okay. <laughs> well, maybe quit. I don't know. Quit and. Israel, you're having the same. You're having the same issue trying to open the Kalad file. Uh, me, Emmanuel, I cannot, I cannot type right now, actually. Look. Yeah. Maybe, uh, see if it works or, or just quit out of it. <coughs> so Google trying to hack, hack our open source ways. The fan that we need uh, is the exactly the image that you share me. Yeah. Okay. Can you share me the link that you get the the image, please? Oh, it's in the BOM. The link is in the BOM. Um, can you see it in the BOM? Yeah, yeah. 
but I, I don't I don't find it. It doesn't show up. Okay. AD Rav twelve. Go two columns over. You see it? Thank you. Yep. I can... Can get the name the, in the filing. Yeah, you see the Amazon link now? Yeah, 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 thank you. Yeah.